It's a commonly known fact that training racehorses is a game of ups and downs, and nobody has experienced the roller coaster ride in the current season quite like Henry de Bromhead. The loss of majority owner Anne and Alan Potts' horses at the beginning of the season represented a serious blow to the Waterford trainer, but the wheel of fortune was soon to spin in his favour, with the fallout between Jiggenstown Stud and Willie Mullins leading to the transfer of many high class horses to his yard. An opportunity that De Bromhead has grasped firmly with both hands. Van Tornado is going to take the J and Wine.com chase for Henry De Bromhead for Ruby Walsh and a fifth success in the race for Jiggenstown House Stud. Van Tornado's your winner. It's Petty Mouchois and Brian Cooper in the Jiggenstown Colours will win for Henry De Bromhead. It's been a great week for owner Roger Brookhouse and Henry De Bromhead as some plan and Jamie Russell win. Petty Mouchois is keeping up from good plan. Henry now heads to the Cheltenham Festival with the team the envy of most trainers, headed by recent Fiesta's chase hero and Gold Cup hope, Champagne West. Henry, what an amazing season it's been. If you don't mind, just take us back to the autumn and the blow of losing the Pots horses first of all. That must have been a very tough moment for you as a trainer after all the success previously. Oh yeah, it was it was um, a shame to lose the horse, lose them. Yeah, unfortunately that's what happened, and you know that was it. But we were very fortunate to have received more horses from Jiggenstown and from the Brookhouses and various other owners also. And uh, luckily, we you know we were in a good good place. It's a classic example, isn't it, of the old saying when one door closes, another one opens. Just how much of a gap was it before? when the pods horses left and then the new horses started to come in? Well, we'd already increased numbers from various owners, but especially Chickenstown and, and the Brookhouses. You know, Sub-Lieutenant had arrived and some plan and Champagne West and various horses at that stage. But uh, obviously then when the Mullins horses were removed, we, we were fortunate to receive more of them. It's been a brilliant season. You've already beaten your best tally. And Henry, this fellow behind us here has certainly played his part, Champagne West. When he came to you, he was always viewed, I think, as a talented horse, but had had his jumping problems. How much effort has gone into maybe turning him into the horse he is now? Well, look, he, as you say, he always had very good form. And, I mean, he's jumped pretty well for us since he's come, you know. So, you know, we, we do various different things to try and help their jumping. And it seems to have helped him along the way. The win at Tremor on New Year's Day, that was a key race, I think, in terms of bringing him on, wasn't it? Just really seemed to help him with his confidence. Yeah, definitely. We hope that going into Tremor is a little bit worried running him on a, such a tight track. But he handled it really well. As you say, he, he really gained confidence there. And did the Fiestas kind of come onto your radar immediately after that, or were you even thinking about it before or tomorrow? No, it was probably more after that. I mean, it was in the back of my mind, but, but certainly when he did it so nicely and he seemed to be going further and further away over the 2-5 at Tremor, you'd hope you know, that further would suit him. And we know the Fiestas, it's always a really keenly contested handicap. For him to win the way he did must have... He even exceeded your wildest hopes. Didn't it? Yeah, you kind of dreamt going into it that he might do something like that. But when he went out and actually did it, it's great. And in the past, we've seen on his own, Jack Adam have gone onto the Gold Cup after winning a Fiesta. He's actually off lower marks. So there's every reason to think this fella can be competitive after the rating he won off, isn't it? Well, that's what you hope. You know, in fairness, Noel O'Brien is, is seldom far off the mark. You know, he put him straight up to 166. He was suitably impressed. And you know, you'd, you'd have to take what Noel thinks very seriously and also looking at the performance on the day. So, yeah, look, we're happy to take our chance and uh, see so long as there's a, a bit of an ease in the ground. And this year's Gold Cup, Henry, there's been plenty of upheaval along the way, hasn't there? Don Cossack's obviously retired, looks like Thistle Crack is out as well. Do you feel it, it has at least got an open look to it, maybe for an up-and-comer to come along like this guy? Yeah, hopefully. I mean, I think it's very competitive. Uh, I don't know if there's any, you know, real star. Well, they're all stars, but there's... You you know, they're all sort of 160 to 170 horses, I think, bar one or two. So they're all rated very close to each other, and I'd say it's very competitive. And just finally, coming back to this guy, would you be optimistic the best is still to come from him? Because he doesn't have a huge amount of mileage on the clock, does he? No, I mean, look, he's, he's been great, and he's, he's in, seems in great form. We're happy with him, and sure, we'll roll the dice now and see. Here we are, Henry, with Petit Michoir. 
what a season this horse has had. He's won two grade ones already. It might have been three if he hadn't fallen in the fighting fifth at Newcastle. Presumably, you've got to be heading to Cheltenham, if not full of confidence, full of optimism at least. I know you're yeah. a pessimist by nature. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> uh, look, he's been, you know, like you say, he's had a great season already. So, yeah, hopefully he'll give a good account of himself. Just looking at those two wins at Leopardstown, I suppose he was more impressed with the first time, but then again, he was taken on earlier in the race last time. Do you think that maybe had a part in the, the kind of closer margin between the two horses? Yeah, I think so. You know, I mean, they went very fast early on, you know, and, and then Nichols Canyon took him on a lot earlier, I felt, in, at, in January. Like, it was a very fast time. I mean, I, I think 3.41 is pretty quick for two miles, isn't it? You know, and, and especially around Leopardstown, doing all the hard work. Look, we were happy he won it. He, it's the Irish champion hurdle, you know, it was a brilliant win and great to do it. I'm sure you get nervous watching a lot of your top horses in action, but this fella in particular, <laughs> it's thrill a minute the way he goes. Yeah, up, he's it? great. He's great. He loves it. You know, that's that's the way he is, you know. Newcastle was a bit disappointing the third last when he fell. All in all, his jumping seems pretty good, yeah. And again, a bit like the Gold Cup, the champion hurdle this year, there's an opportunity there, isn't there, for a new kid on the block to come forward? Yeah, it seems that way. A lot of the novices from last year are going to have a go. Yeah, you know, we're delighted to be one of them involved. We've not too far to go now. What sort of routine will he have between now and the big day? Does, is he a horse that takes much getting ready? No, he'll, he'll go. For, he'll have one more piece, bigger piece of work, but he's pretty fit and ready to rock and roll, yeah. And it's Monolay, the leader, safely over the last and is out about four lengths in front as they run up towards the finish. And Monolay will continue the ceaseless form of David Mullins and Henry de Bromhead. Henry Monolay, this is a really promising young horse, isn't it? Second to death, Judy and Avon, either side of that, two really impressive wins at Punchestown and Clonmel. How's he been since we saw him last? Yeah, he's been in mighty form. He seems really fresh and well, working nicely, and yeah, very happy with him. He's got a couple of options at Cheltenham, obviously. He's got the Neptune and the Albert Bartlett. What's going to make up your mind? I know you, you don't want to commit at this stage. Yeah, I'm not sure yet. You know, obviously, Death Judy in the Albert Bartlett, he's already beaten us once before. That would have to be a, a big um, concern. Ground, various things. You know, probably three miles is, is his ideal, but just whether we want to be taking on Death Judy again, you know. I, so I don't know. We, we, we'll see. There's, a, there's various things that. Um, is Harvey getting interested? <laughs> We've got to bring in Harvey here now because he, he wants his share of airtime. This yeah, is Monolly's little companion. Just yeah, yeah. Is. Harvey is uh, Monolly has a tendency to get wound up when he's in a stable. Obviously, they don't when they're in these. So Harvey is his companion. So when he goes to Cheltenham, obviously they don't have these um, outdoor areas in in the stables at Cheltenham. So. Um, the plan is for Harvey to keep him company and not let him get too wound up. But Harvey might end up with you. He seems to have taken <laughs> a real... Uh, he yeah. seems a bit fickle, though. Yeah, isn't keen yeah. interest in you, Gary. I remember, was it Remittance Man used to have a sheep that travelled yeah. to the races? Yeah, that's it's not something, of, anyway. It? Yeah. I don't know what it was, but he did. Yeah, no, it's not at all, and they're great. They just want a companion. You know, he could yeah, get yeah. to Cheltenham and, you know, start doing laps in his box. So, um, yeah, we find it works well. And just going back to this fella's last run at Clamell, Henry, he was really impressive in bad ground that day. I think it was, was it two six or three miles? Three, right? miles, three miles, yeah, yeah, very testing. I, my view is he's better on better. You know, I think he handles heavy ground well. Going to Clamell, I was worried about the combination of three miles and heavy ground. Or I had no doubt on good ground, he'd have been fine. But just, yeah, I think he, he'd nearly be better on better. But it seems to handle any, you know, yeah. One phrase you often hear about horses when they're jumping hurdles is that you can't wait to see them jumping a fence. Yeah. If ever that was coined yeah. for a horse, it was him. Wasn't yeah, it? that's it. Exactly. Yeah. This anything that happens this year is a bonus for him. Yeah. Hopefully he'll take to the fences. He's already won a point a point. He jumps. He schools really well over fences. And yeah, we're really looking forward to him for that. And Henry Sub Lieutenant, I must say. He's a real favourite of mine. He's been a great acquisition for you this season with those two early season wins and two great runs and defeat in hindsight as well, weren't they? At Absolutely. And Thurlis. Yeah, definitely. The Chakadam out, outlander in front of him in, in, um, in Punchestown in the grade one and then sizing John in the Kinlock Bray. Yeah, no, it's, he's, he's had a really good year already. And I know the Ryanair is kind of a race you've been aiming at with him from some time back. Has his preparation gone just about as well as you could have hoped so far, at least? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, you possibly would have loved to have won in Thurlis, but, you know, 
Uh, he, he's had a real straight run the whole way, and yeah, we're very happy. Yeah. And two mile five, I think it is on the new course at Cheltenham. Do you think that's going to really bring out the best in this guy? I hope so. He would start over three, you know, in a grade one. I hope so. And Henry, just to sum up, if you like, ahead of Cheltenham, how many runners are we looking at roughly at this stage from Nuckeen? We're status? hoping 10 or 12, yeah, and that's it. You know, we've got some lovely horses going over. We all know how hard it is to win there, but sure, we'll give it our best shot. And in terms of the quality that you're bringing this year, would that compare, do you think, really favourably with the teams you brought in the past? Yeah, I, I'd say so. You know, we'd have a, a, a more strength and depth, definitely. So we'll see now. Hopefully that'll reflect in uh, results. I know it's always an anxious time of the year for trainers as well, these last couple of weeks in the run-up, and as we were saying earlier on, I think you're a pessimist by nature, but at the same time, you must be waking up in the morning pretty excited about what lies ahead, are you? Yeah, absolutely. You know, the, the calibre of horse we've got is brilliant, and yeah, look, it's exciting, it's great to be involved, you know, even when you're as pessimistic as I am, you, you, can't, uh, you can't knock that, you know.